Hi everyone, welcome back to Lifting the Lamp. I'm Frater Eleftheria and tonight I want to talk about a sort of recent event that happened that has piqued the interests of certain people in the religious world and that is a speech that Pope Francis gave to what is a sort of interfaith kind of a dialogue or interfaith conference in Singapore uh, where he made some interesting comments uh, and I'm going to talk about some of the reasons why it's caused controversy, what he said, and also my thoughts on it and some of the kinds of issues that are raised when we consider the implications of his comment and the way it could have been taken by certain people. So that's what I'm presenting tonight. And the thing that Pope Francis said at this interfaith conference that has caused all the controversy is that all religions are paths to God. And essentially, every religion is just a different language describing the pathway to God. And this took many people by surprise. And not surprisingly, there were members of the Catholic community that were not happy about this because to them it was a betrayal of what the Pope should be putting forward as the Catholic position. And so that's when the controversy kind of started. The Vatican sort of tried to backtrack and say, oh, the Pope didn't actually say that all religions lead to God. That was just a bad translation. But some analysis by other YouTubers uh, has revealed that, yeah, it was the correct translation. Uh, it's exactly what the Pope said. All religions lead to God. And so that is the thing that was said, and that's the thing that has caused the controversy. But why the controversy? You know, um, I, I was raised a Catholic, so un I understand why certain Catholics would be upset about this. Within the Catholic Church, as in other Christian denominations, there is a belief that there's this sort of exclusive claim that the Church is making uh, that not all religions lead to God, but Christ's way does. So that is the position... Whether you agree with it or not, uh, and I'll give my thoughts in a moment, uh, but whether you agree with it or not, that is what the Pope would be expected to put forward and defend as a Catholic position. And to say something different to that is seen by these, these very vigilant Catholics as not only a concession, but a betrayal of their faith. So that's why they're upset. And I will get to whether I think that that's warranted or not, those feelings that they're having. But um, let me at first just look at the comment itself and uh, I'll tell you if I agree or disagree. So if we just consider the comment made by Pope Francis in isolation, we don't consider the context or his responsibilities as you know, the Bishop of Rome or the cultural moment in which we're living and what kind of pressures there might be on world leaders and whether they should bow to those pressures. Before we consider all of that, let's just consider the comment itself in isolation, without any context, that all religions are pathways to God. I happen to think that this has some truth to it. I would make an exception for like the left-hand path, which is all about rejecting God and making yourself into a God, which is, a you know, never going to work because a human being, no matter how much power or control they gain, can ever become equal to that which is transcendent. But besides those kinds of spiritual philosophies, if you consider the mainstream religions, um, you know, the big, the big ones like Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Judaism, Taoism, Hinduism, these are all pathways to God. And they seem to be working for the people within those religions. Well, of course, there's fanatics who just twist religions and turn it into something uh, that is an instrument of terror. But for the people that are sincerely following those religions, um, it, it seems to, to be working for them as a pathway to God. And the very word religare uh, means to, to reconnect i.e. to reconnect with God. So, by definition, a religion is a way of connecting to God. 
they do present a pathway to God, which is very workable. You've got um, the tradition of Vedanta, of yoga, which gives techniques for reunion with God. Uh, you've got the Buddhist, the, the, the Buddhist path doesn't call it God, uh, but there are ways of reuniting with the non-dual transcendent reality that precedes all things, which in many respects resembles Brahman in the Vedic philosophy, which in turn is a kind of a concept of God. It's a bit more of an impersonal concept. Sometimes it can take the form of a supreme being, but it, it very closely approximates the monotheistic idea of God. And then, of course, the monotheistic religions see one God as a transcendent kind of a truth, um, as represented by the fact that it is not a God that you can make a graven image of, such as the pagan idols, that there is, that, there is one truth that has created all things, that all things proceed from, and that is the thing that those religions are trying to get us back to. So it is true that they are all describing pathways to God, which work, and they are in their own language showing us how to do that. And when you get really extreme fundamentalist kind of Christians who exist in the Catholic world as well as, you know, in the Protestant world, you know, Baptists and evangelicals and all of that, when you, when you get those kinds of Christians saying, you know, that only their church and their kind of belief system about Jesus is true, all other religions are false, and if you believe any other religion except for theirs, you're going to hell. I think that, that, is, just a, that, that is just a bonkers way of, of thinking. Um, and in order to believe that, you would have to believe that God created this world, created the human race, and then decided that he would create hell, and send anybody there who didn't follow the correct religion during their lives to be punished forever. And there's only one religion that is correct and thousands of religions that are wrong. And if you just so happen to be born into a isolated tribe somewhere that's never encountered the gospel, too bad, you're all gonna go to hell because that's the way it's been set up. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It, it, is, it is just no, being that deserves to be called the supreme being would ever devise such a ridiculous circus as humanity's pathway to salvation. So I think what the Pope was trying to do was to challenge that really fundamentalist idea of Christianity that, that we see in, in several churches. And I think that there are things in the Bible which contradict that. There are commentaries on the Bible or even the Torah which, which, com which contradict that. Many of the Jewish sages identified seven laws of Noah, uh, which all of humanity followed as a way of following the one true God. These were, these were laws which, as the name suggests, originated with Noah um, before the Abrahamic covenant, and all of Noah's descendants are all the human race, according to the Bible story. So there is already a prophet who connects all of humanity to God. Already we have an expanded idea of the way that God reveals itself to the human race, even within biblical religion, that it's not just isolated to one little group of people in the Levant at a particular point in time. And, and everybody else just never gets to experience God. And you know, it's, it's interesting to think that um, many of these great stories seem to also have a, a common origin to them. Um, we have Noah in the Bible and the great flood of Noah in the Bible. In Hindu beliefs, there is the story of Manu who encountered Matsya, one of the avatars of Vishnu, who, who told Manu that there was a great flood coming and he needed to 
preserve part of humanity and, and you know build a boat in order to to survive as the flood as the deluge swept through the rest of the world it, it's the exact parallel with the story of noah so who's to say that the the very rich kind of belief system that emerged in the form of the vedas and the upanishads and all of that in india was not a legitimate expression of the children of noah in a different part of the world to the abrahamic covenant sort of striving towards god and towards understanding god which culminated in the idea of brahman which is very close i believe to the monotheistic idea you know you can't just say everybody who is not a christian is damned it's too simplistic and at the end of the day you can't actually trust that the revealed knowledge of of the scriptures wasn't corrupted along the way because human beings are very sinful and you know they've been caught out many times before doing just that altering the holy books to suit their own devices to suit their own biases and their own kind of power games so the fundamentalist view just doesn't cut it and there is a good case to make uh, that all religions are pathways to god but while i i think that's the case i do think that there are reasons why perhaps the way that the pope made this comment or the context in which he made his comment was not the best and it kind of has the potential to be interpreted in a way uh, that is, is quite damaging in certain respects. So the first problem that I have with Pope Francis's comment is that it lacks the conviction that I would expect from a person in his position. So what I mean by that is, if you're the Pope, you are the head of the Catholic Church and you have one job. Your one job is to defend the church, to speak truthfully ab a about what the church teaches and be a representative of what the church teaches, not some kind of um, progressive postmodern doctrine, um, but what the church teaches. So there are certain responsibilities that, that come with that position. And you can disagree with elements of the Catholic doctrine, but that doesn't change the fact that this is the responsibilities of the Pope. And this is the thing that people are recognizing and getting quite upset about. And I don't think that you need to necessarily agree with all of what the Catholic Church teaches, or even any of it, to appreciate that it's a problem if the Pope can't stand up and represent the Catholic faith with integrity. Uh, and the reason why it's a problem is because, leaving aside the fact that he's kind of um, betraying his own cause by acting in that way, in this, this liberal Western culture that we have, liberal in the traditional sense, not the kind of the sense that it's meant today, which is something very different and much less attractive in my opinion. But in this kind of liberal society that we have, you know, there's a marketplace of ideas. Um, there are lots of different ways of seeing the world that are in competition with one another. And maybe some people are right about one thing. And maybe some people that hold a, a different view are, are right about a different thing. But the way that you you can test th these ideas and, and see how truthful they really are in the objective sense is by pitting them against each other in debate and discussion to see which one comes out on top. And in order to do that, well, there's a couple of prerequisites. First of all, there needs to be a kind of ethos that it's a good thing for people to have different opinions uh, and, and even argue with each other in, in a kind of civil way and not just, you know, agreeing that everybody has their truth. That's the first prerequisite. And then the, the second prerequisite is that when people are engaged in an exchange of ideas, they need to actually be able to defend their position enough that it can actually be tested properly. 
And when the Pope makes statements like this, it means that rather than embodying an ethos where this is what I believe and you might not agree with me, but it's what I believe and I will, I will debate with you about what I believe, he's kind of sacrificing that sort of a position to just accepting everything as true and not really having any sort of conviction that your own perspective is, is, is true to you because it doesn't matter anyway because all truth is relative, blah, 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 blah. That's kind of what it's feeding into, this sort of postmodern idea that everyone's being pressured to accept where nobody believes in anything anymore and will accept anything because nobody believes in anything. So that's one kind of concerning trend that the Pope failing to defend the Catholic position plays into. And then the other one, of course, is that right or wrong, we can't actually test the veracity of the Catholic position if it's not properly put forward. If, if the Pope doesn't have the confidence to say, look, the Catechism of the Catholic Church says this, if you can't do that, then it's not possible to then scrutinize that point of view to, to reach a conclusion. Maybe this is right, maybe this is wrong. Uh, you know, and you know, it's like if there's a tournament, if there's a fighting tournament, and one person just really isn't trying, they let the other person you know, belt them until they hit the ground. You know, that's not a fair fight. And everyone who came to see two equally matched opponents is going to be very disappointed. And, you know, we call that throwing the match if it's done on purpose, which makes you wonder, uh, who is the Pope throwing the match for in this instance? But there are certainly different interests that are influencing the culture at the moment, particularly Western culture. And there is this, this real push towards moral relativism and leaving the traditions of the past behind. And in fact, throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, because there's some very good things and some very healthy things that we find in the traditions of the past um, that we're losing sight of now. And society is fraying as a result of that which I've spoken about in previous videos, you know, and, and it's really being pushed so hard in all of our cultural institutions right now. And so the anti-establishment streak in me wants to push back against that and say, no, let's hear from the traditionalists because it's a fresh perspective compared to all of the other garbage that we're bombarded with on a day-to-day -day basis and just told to unquestioningly accept. Ironically, it actually produces a greater diversity of opinion in today's context to allow those voices to come forward and present a different opinion. So I happen to think that the, church, that the Pope should be more assertive in saying that this is what the church believes, deal with it. Because it's what the world needs right now. Perhaps if I made this video 20 years ago and having a more hegemonic Christian culture was more fresh in everybody's memories, I might say, okay, well, it's good that the Pope said that because it offers a different perspective to just the doctrinarianism that we're constantly exposed to when we hear anything from the dominant religion of our society. Uh, but that's not the situation we find ourselves in now. So the other thing that I don't like about what Pope Francis said is that it can kind of be taken very easily to mean, oh, you know, all religions, they're just the same anyway. Uh, when in fact, that's not true. All religions are not the same. And although, you know, because of the New Age movement and this move towards universalism and all of that, which has its healthy perspective, don't get me wrong, uh, you know, because of the push, because of the, the, the direction that we're moving in with regard to that, a lot of people have this idea that it's all one, all religions are the same. And there's a kind of, there's quite a, a nice sentiment behind that, but it's not exactly true. Um, sure, you can say 
that there are there is an ageless wisdom that there are certain golden threads that run through all of the different religions through time which remain the same and are a kind of source of eternal truth sure you can say that you can say that um, there are certain commonalities that all religions have that are pretty self-explanatory like belief in some higher power undoubtedly they are all the same in that respect striving towards god which is kind of what i think the pope was trying to get at and also this idea of the golden rule you know do unto others as you would have done unto you very much a feature of all the serious religions at least so in that respect yeah you can say they're the same uh, but that's kind of where the similarities end because when you get into the the, the nitty-gritty of what every religion believes about uh, what happens after you you leave this world uh, what the path to salvation is or enlightenment or whatever you want to call it um, how many gods there are what god looks like all of this sort of thing um, even what kinds of things are moral uh, are there certain dietary requirements we should follow all these sorts of questions once you get into that level of detail all religions are not the same in fact they're very different and it's dangerous to go too far in the direction of pretending like they are all the same each religion kind of brings its own thing to the table it, it elucidates a different part of the human experience and if we just try and substitute one religion for the other just thoughtlessly then we lose that we, we lose the, that that unique kind of perspective that that particular religion brought so for example if i wanted to explore a belief system which told me how to change society how to change the world so that the world that i live in better reflected you know the, the glory of god and the good order of god i would not look to religions like taoism or buddhism or hinduism for that i would look to judaism and christianity uh, which which are about glorifying the world in god's image and making society better and helping the downtrodden whereas in those other religions from those other parts of the world the social justice component doesn't matter so much because you know we're all just victims of karma and we're all on the wheel of incarnation and there's no point changing the world because everything's cyclical anyway and if you've done good things you get rewarded for it in your next life and you can just leave it to the gods it's a very different perspective um, but conversely you know if i wanted to go to a religion that gave me a really precise science of consciousness uh, and a really precise technique step by step for entering into a mystical union with godhead i would look to something like buddhism or hinduism for that i would not look to the western religions for that um, you know because they're just so much better at it um, and perhaps jesus was was trying to introduce something like that into western religion but uh, those would have been his esoteric teachings so you can see each religion brings something different to the table and if we treat them as the same we risk trivializing each of them and trivializing the thing that makes each of them unique and if we try and make them all the same we we risk losing sight of those things that make them unique and losing something valuable in the process and ultimately this kind of postmodern kind of view of religion that the pope seems to be making allowances for uh, ultimately the kind of belief system that it benefits the most it doesn't benefit the muslims it doesn't benefit the christians it doesn't benefit the hindus or the buddhists or the jews it actually benefits irreligion the most to, ha to have no religion because if you can water down and dilute and trivialize and relativize and and therefore remove meaning from uh, 
all of these different religions, then it means that ultimately none of them has the claim to truth uh, that they present, and they are all falsified, and we end up with just believing in nothing. You might be right or wrong, okay? You might believe in the flying spaghetti monster, but if you believe in the flying spaghetti monster and you really believe that, I would prefer that you have the courage of your convictions and that, that I can challenge you and it's a fair fight than if you just fall down and say, oh, you know, actually, I'm not sure. Some of those religions might actually be better than what I believe. No, that is, that is just cowardly and, and I cannot respect that position. And so this is what I don't like about Pope Francis's comment. Uh, and I certainly wouldn't expect it from a Pope of all people. Not, notwithstanding, I think, the underlying kind of comment that all religions are a path to God is true. Um, I think that it just could have been phrased differently. And I would have expected the Pope, at the very least, to talk about the, the uniqueness of Christ and what Christ brought into the world. Um, so I can see where some of the outrage comes from, but, but those are some of the debates that can emerge from Pope Francis's comments. And I hope that I've kind of given a bit of a canvas of, of, of some of the, the issues that are raised by that comment. And a bit of a, I hope a balanced perspective on, on that comment and the pros and the cons. So I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, please uh, leave a like on the video, leave any comments you have down below, subscribe to this channel to support my work. Uh, and if you wanna support me further, please hit join or thanks down below. But thank you again for listening and I'll see you next time.